Welcome to Living in Victory. I am Pastor Roger, pastor of Victory Center Church, and it is a great day to be living in victory again. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank you for joining us, uh, joining me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it is, whatever time it is, whatever part of the world you might be in. God's got some exciting news for you, is the gospel. It's uh, almost too good to believe. It's almost too good to be true. And by our human standards, it, it really is by, you know, by this, by carnal thinking. But praise the Lord, God's grace is amazing. And it is the divine enablement and favor from God himself that allows us to walk in the supernatural blessing, uh, the, the miraculous, the, the supernatural abundance, the supernatural health and provision, and the supernatural victory that, that Christ himself has, has made and continues to make available for us. And so I just want to thank everyone who supports this with your, with your prayers, with your time, with your, uh, your, your finances, with, with all the things that you do to help get this glorious message of victory around the world. So hey, let's get started. Today, uh, we're, we're doing a show and it's uh, called All Things Are Possible. I just want to make sure I had that title right. All Things Are Possible, praise the Lord. And uh, man, in Christ, all things are possible. There is nothing, there is nothing that is impossible. Nothing, you know, all things are possible in Christ. Yeah, you have unlimited potential in, in Christ. Yeah, unlimited. You know, we look at, you can look, start in the, any, so many places in the, in the Word of God, so many places in His Bible. There is example after example after example. And, and, and you know, and I know, you know, I can look at my own life, I can look at the lives of others, but, you know, I'm just going to go straight to the Word because, it, it, praise God, it's forever settled in heaven. And I can just look at the life of David, you know, he came up against a giant, he was just a boy. And uh, that didn't look possible. It looked impossible. He, he, he fought this giant named Goliath. And uh, he, he had three stones, you know. He had stones <laughs> in a slingshot. And uh, the giant was a, was, a, was a massive warrior who had the entire army terrified, the entire army of Israel, Israel terrified. And uh, David b boldly stands up and, 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 and declares, what he's going to do, that his victory is that day, that he's going to have victory, and that the giant is done. And, and the, in fact, the whole army standing behind him is, is also toast. That didn't seem possible. But you know what? Jesus tells us in Mark 9, 23, he said, and Jesus, and Jesus said to him, uh, all things are possible for he who believes. You know, all things are possible for he who believes. And I know in, in the context, what Jesus is talking to a man who came to him and said, well, Lord, uh, your disciples couldn't do anything for me. Uh, if you can do anything, it would be great. You know, basically is the, the context of there because the, 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 the man's son was, was ill, demon-possessed, having all kinds of problems. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> and Jesus looks at him and says, if I can do, what do you mean if, if, if you can do anything? You know, Jesus kind of throws the question back at him like, you're, you're putting it all on me? No, if you can believe, all things are possible. And, uh, you know, and I believe when we look at, you know, even what I referenced to D David and Goliath, David had a responsibility, <laughs> or responsibility, I love that word. Uh, it means the ability to respond. It means that you're not helpless because <laughs> you have a ability to respond. Um, you know, James 3, 4 tells us that the, your tongue is the rudder that guides the ship of your life in any direction you choose, regardless of how strong the winds blow or regardless of the external circumstances, you have the ability to respond. And your response is what determines the outcome, not the wind, you know, and, 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 and we look at David, it was his response. Prior to, prior to engaging in, in, the, in the field of combat with the enemy, David, David assessed the situation and he, he looked at Goliath briefly, but he also, he also looked at his covenant with God. He also looked at, he also looked at his, uh, his agreement he had in place with, with, with the, the Lord Almighty. And you see that when he references, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of a living God? He was kind of, he was like incredulous because he was like, what, what's going on here? David's God 
in the, in the relationship and the covenant that David had. And that's when he, when he referenced the uncircumcision. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant. David was saying, I have a covenant. He doesn't. In fact, we all have a covenant, guys. They don't. What's going on here? And, and so David, David had the ability to respond in faith to the precious promises of the covenant he was in, the, the covenant he had with God. And because he took responsibility that, that the covenant gave him, the ability to respond in faith and stand in the word, the, the giant was just a thing that needed to get out of his way. It was just a mountain that needed to be cast into the sea. And and so that's what Jesus is saying here to this, in response, he's, and this is really what he's saying to us. He's saying, stop trying to blame God. <laughs> stop trying to put it on Jesus. If you can believe, all things are possible. And that's one of the, one of the most awesome things about, uh, is, uh, one of the most awesome things about our new covenant is that, you know, we are now in a new covenant with God through Christ Jesus, and, and it's an unbreakable covenant because we're, we entered in through Christ. We didn't enter in through our own works. We didn't enter in um, based on anything we did. We entered in based on everything Jesus did. Our, the way we enter in is to simply respond in faith to what Jesus has already provided by grace. And faith is really the only appropriate response when you come into like a revelation of what Jesus has already done for you. Like faith, it's easy to say, well, sure, <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. That's, that seems like a good idea. Oh, you mean my sins are forgiven already? Mm, what else? Oh, by his stripes I'm healed? Oh, no, okay. Oh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, uh, he became poor, so I, I don't have to be, I can live in abundance? Hmm. Well, that sounds per this all sounds pretty good. You mean I don't have to be living a life of, uh, of torment anymore? I don't have to be living a life of separation from God? I don't have to, in fact, even if my life is, is already good, even if I'm, even if I'm not in a, a, in a manifested state of total depravity where I run around like a lunatic and do crazy things and think I'm horrible and everybody around me is nuts as well, even if I have a life where I say, wow, um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, why, why do I need God again? Because you will become complete. You will experience something even greater than you've ever encountered before in your life. Coming into union with Christ brings you into a place of, 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 of a love encounter with the creator of the universe, the, the, the creator that chose you in him before he even created the world. And in fact, you are not close to completion without a revelation of Jesus Christ. You may think that things are going well for you now, but when you come into a relationship with Christ Jesus, you will see wherever you're at, whatever you've done is gonna pale in comparison to the glorious love that the God, the God of the universe, your, your heavenly Father has for you. And you're gonna come into this place of, of completeness, of, of wholeness that you have never experienced before in your life and that you can never really experience without God. You know, and, and regardless of how wonderful your life is prior to, prior to a revelation of Jesus Christ or how horrible, how completely depraved or, or horrible your life is, when you come into union with Christ and you come into a revelation of the gospel of grace, everything changes for the better everything is beyond beyond all you can ask or think so regardless of where you're asking and your thinking is right now you will come into an even greater uh, an even greater place of revelation an even greater place of understanding an even greater uh, revelation about who you are because it's who you are in Christ and you can never fully be who you are until you realize who you are in Christ because that's when you really come into this unlimited potential of, of all the things that God has in store for you all the amazing things that you cannot do in your own human ability for, for, for however impressive that may be or unimpressive that may be, you know, you know and, I, and I honestly believe, I believe that no matter who you are, 
you, you will have some, you know, regardless of who you are, what you're serving, you, you've, got, you've gotten gifts in you. You've got gifts in you. And, and the, 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 the way, the, to the extent that you're walking in those gifts today, hey, you know, it varies from person to person. But wherever you're at, when you come into that revelation of Christ and you come into a, like a receiving the, the glorious gospel of salvation, and the, the path to life and immortality is illuminated through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, and you get to see your divine purpose, your, your divine nature, the reason why you've been created, you know, and, and, and you come into this revelation of, man, all th I'm a co-heir with, co with Christ himself. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I have been brought into a place of completion Wow, it, it, it's, a, it's a complete revelation. And like I said, it's gonna be beyond all, you've, all you can ask or think. Anything you've experienced before is gonna pale in comparison to the glorious riches that Jesus has for you. And, and, the, and the union that you have with God himself. Uh, there's experiencing the Zoe life. You know, John 10, 10, and Jesus said this, so I love the way he said it, praise the Lord. <laughs> he, Jesus was good with the word. He was the word. He is the living word. And uh, he's the word that became flesh. And he dwelt among us. And now he dwells in us. You know, if you're born again, you, you, the word of God, the, the very creative force that designed the universe dwells within you. Man, the word has become, you know, the word has become flesh in me. Like the word, like the, my body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you're born again, your body is the temple of God. Whoa, the, the temple of God. Um, Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief comes only to steal, to kill and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life abundant. And I know even for, you know, believers, non-believers, we're having, a, we, some of us are, in, we have been in a place of having life. We have life and, you know, oh, you know, life is, life is life. But that's not the kind of life that Jesus wants you to, he says life abundant. He wants you to raise your expectations in life because everything in this world has been, you know, when, when God created the universe, when God created the world, when, you know, he created it for you. He created it for his, for his children. You know, mankind is, we are the children of God and that's who he created this planet for, you know, and, and everything that God has created, he created for you. Everything God has done, he's done for you. And when we realize how awesome, <laughs> how, how, how endless his love is, it gives us this place of, um, it, it gives us a revelation of his grace. It gives us a, a revelation of um, his, his, his divine enablement and favor, his heart towards us. And it gives us a revelation of his heart towards us so that the fear and the doubt is eliminated. And, and that's what Jesus is talking about here. He says, if you can believe, all things are possible. And Jesus came to be our example of somebody who could believe. You know, Jesus came to do a lot of things. One of those things he came to do was to be our example of what, a, what, what believing in God looks like, what trusting in God looks like. And, you know, in John chapter in John chapter one, um, it, it, I love the I love the Gospel of John. I believe it was uh, the last Gospel written, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and not just because it's the last one in the book, but but it was really the last Gospel written out of those the, out of the the Gospels. And the the uh, John, who wrote the Gospel of John, has um, all, he uh, he's been. Uh, alive for a long time at this point when he writes this gospel and he has such a depth of revelation and, and an understanding of grace that I don't believe he had well of course he didn't have it when he was walking with Jesus because a lot of the times and they do and I love the, the humility of the, the writers of the gospels because they these guys are writing about their own experiences like we were totally clueless we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> you know um, but but they but when when Christ came out of the tomb and when he when he when he is standing there and you know in in after the after the resurrection it's like whoa okay they, they, they were starting to get a revelation of a lot of things that he talked about but but John even writes years later when this revelation of grace and he had actually been uh, been in the same area and I believe he's been uh, been reading a lot of the things that Paul has been writing and and Paul had just such an amazing revelation of grace. Um, and so John, you know, John's writing his perspective, but he's writing it with a much clearer revelation of grace. And he, when he writes the book of John, it's just such a beautiful, uh, it's just so beautiful. And it, I just really believe it just captures so much of what, of, of 
the grace that's in Christ Jesus, and especially John chapter one, you know, it talks about how uh, grace and truth came in Jesus Christ. And so Jesus comes and he knows the Father. You know, John chapter one, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. You know, the Word was, and it talks about being face to face in those, in that, in, in, the, in the original text. It talks about the God. Jesus and the Father were such, a, were such an intimate relationship. They had such a close relationship that when, when Jesus came in to this world, he had a intimate knowledge of, of grace and truth. You know, John chapter one, verse 12 talks about how Jesus, Jesus, you know, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth became realized or became manifested in, in, in Jesus Christ because he didn't have a doubt. He didn't have, uh, he didn't have a disposition to doubt. He hadn't had love taught out of the scriptures. He hadn't had grace uh, filtered from his doctrine. He under, he was like, nope. I've been face to face with God. I've been face to face with the Father. When I read His Word, I and I, and I look at His when I look at His covenant promises to me in this Word. When I read the, you know, this is what Jesus. I'm, I'm speaking. When Jesus read His Word, and this is actually it's true for me too. What do you know? Praise the Lord. When I read His Word and when I look at His covenant promises in Scripture, if I want to have Christ-like faith, I have to say, "Man, that's for me." Praise the Lord. Uh, man, that's for me. You know, Isaiah, Isaiah 61, man, that's for me. What? Are you saying, yes, I am saying, I am saying this because Jesus said in John 14, 12, if you believe in me, you're going to do the same works I've done and even greater works. So I believe, and, and I know many of you do too, and we're coming into a deeper revelation of this, is that, that, that the, word, the word of God is written so that we, and, and it, it even talks about, uh, participating in the divine nature through a revelation of the true knowledge of God that's th that's apparent in Christ Jesus you know becoming a participant in the divine nature and being able to walk in the in these uh, supernatural blessings because we can see the grace and truth that is in that Christ Jesus reveals but we have to say hey that's really the revelation of the Father. That's really what the Father looks like because Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. All things are, all things are manifest in the flesh in Christ Jesus to reveal what the, God, what the God of the universe, what your heavenly Father looks like. You know, John says he has made him known. Actually, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump into these scriptures here. And man, I'm excited about this one. Okay, so Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. You know, and, and we see this, you know, with uh, when, when, when uh, the woman with the issue of blood, boom, touches him, bam, healing happens, whoo. That was her faith. You know, faith is super, <laughs> faith is super important to God because that's how he can get across what he's got for you. Uh, Hebrews 11, six says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means it's not possible outside of faith to please God because he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You know, he, so when, when David was facing Goliath and he said, who is this? When he's about to face Goliath and he's like, hey, who is this guy that doesn't have a covenant that's trying to stand up to us? We have a covenant. He doesn't have a covenant. That's called faith in God and faith in God's word. So God was pleased that David had faith. And as a result, the reward of faith was God was able to work through David and bring in a supernatural, miraculous victory for, for David and for the people of Israel. Because faith pleases God. God, because that allows him to get involved in our stuff. And <laughs> we really want God involved in our stuff because he always has a very positive outcome for us, a very victorious outcome for us. And now, and then, and then in Matthew 9, 29, Jesus is praying for some blind guys and he said, hey, may it be unto you according to your faith. Wait, 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 I thought it was according to God's ability. No, it's never according to God's ability. It's always according to your faith. Uh, Matthew um, eleven twenty eight, when um, the uh, lady with the daughter comes and says, oh, I need a miracle. My daughter needs a miracle. And Jesus says, hey, you're, you're, not, you're not an Israelite. I'm sorry, I've only come for the lost sheep of Israel at this time. It's not time to do this yet. And she responds with, but even the dogs get crumbs from the master's table. And Jesus is like, oh, wow. <laughs> he, says, he says, 
woman, you have great faith. What you're asking for is already done, you know, because he couldn't stop it. You know, not that he wanted to, but he, but it was the faith that pleased God. It was the faith that said, I'm taking what grace is available, has made available to me. And, and we, one of the things, and you see this over and over again in scripture, and I really, like if you have eyes to see, you will see it. And I just pray for a revelation knowledge in the name of Jesus. Father God, I, we, we welcome your spirit of rev, wisdom and revelation to flow over each and every person watching this right now in the name of Jesus. Now, eyes to see, if you have eyes to see, you're gonna see over and over again through, through, the, through the scriptures, uh, through the life of Christ where the timing was off. <laughs> the timing was off, but a miracle happened anyway. You know, and a lot of times, you know, when we go back to this, and he, Jesus said, if, if you can, what did Jesus say? What are you, were you putting this on me if I, if I can do it? No, no, no. If you have faith, all things are possible. And sometimes we're waiting for God's timing. Oh, it's not God's time yet. We just need to wait. Oh, Lord, when you're ready, please, please do this. The wedding of Cana. Mary didn't come up and say, oh, Jesus, when you're ready, please, please. In fact, Jesus says, woman, it's not my time. Mom, what are you doing? It's not my time. Like, we're not supposed to be doing this right now. She said, just do whatever he says. Go get some water pots. <laughs> he's like, oh, no, just, just, she just says, do whatever he says. And he's like, okay, we'll just, we'll just do this. Because that was faith in action. And, and it pleased God that there was faith there. It was like, oh, man, I'm going to get involved in this. This is awesome. So Jesus is like, okay, we'll, we'll do this. You know, the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus is not trying to heal women with issues of blood. He's trying to get to Jairus' house so his daughter doesn't die. This woman says, if I can only touch, and she keeps saying to herself, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Boom, she does it. Jesus is like, whoa, what happened? Who did that? What's going on? <laughs> it wasn't, it, and my point is, it wasn't Jesus' timing. He wasn't saying, oh no, don't touch me. I can only touch you. At, at, at some point, when the, when the Holy Spirit is in the right place, and the Word of God is aligned right, and the Son is in the perfect position, God might move, and at that point, then we'll pray, and a miracle may or may not happen, depending on God's will. No, that's not how it works. God, the grace is always available. It's the faith that grabs hold of that grace and pulls it into reality. You know, when Jesus prayed for the blind guys, may it be done to you according to your faith. He didn't say, may it be done to you according to your ability. No, he said, or my ability, he said, or Jesus' ability, he said, may it be done to you according to your faith. Because faith takes what grace has provided. Now, and then again, a, a, a really obvious one where it's not God's, you know, not God's timing is, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I am going to tell you really clearly because I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. God's timing is always right now. In fact, he says he set aside a day and it's called today. That's what the word says. Today is the day. His name is I am not I will be. God's nature is I am. I am healer. I am provider. I am breakthrough. I am blessing. You know, I am. He is I am. He is right now. Why? Because it's already been done, okay? <laughs> it's been, the grace has already been provided before the foundations were even laid. He, and he, he saw the need and he provided the supply before the need showed up. So the, the answer is there for the problem before you even realize there's a problem. So you don't have to wait for God to come up and think of something and say, ooh, what do we do with this one? Or, oh, wait, I, now I have to come up with an answer. His answers are all, his answers, his, his abundance, his blessing, it's all on tap already. All you gotta do is, uh, is tap into it. And just pull the lever down and let it flow. You know, it's like one of those big giant coffee pots where you just, that doesn't run out. You know, or, or anything else with a tap on, you just pull it down and just, oh, here it is, it's full, you know? I don't have to wait for another cup of coffee. You know, I don't gotta put one of those little currents, I just pull the thing down, oh, here it is, wow, I got a cup of coffee. Man, where did this cup of coffee come from? It was already there. It, it, the, it's, it's all on tap, it's all in the heavenly realm. It's all waiting for you just to receive it by grace. So when, when these miracles happen, they're just taking a supply that is already created. Now, when you look at, um, when, when you look at, uh, when Jesus goes into his hometown to do some miracles there, and it said that very few miracles were able to happen. And he was amazed by their unbelief. Again, he's amazed by their lack of faith. And, 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 and he went there to do miracles. God sent Christ Jesus there to perform the miraculous signs and wonders, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, do all the things that he did. 
And they said, not much happened. Why? Because they didn't have faith for it. Not because God didn't have ability for it, but because he didn't have, because the people wouldn't receive by faith the abundance of grace that was being manifested in Christ Jesus. They wouldn't receive by faith, you know. And again, there is, there is an abundance of grace, you know. And if, and if you're, if you're, if you're in a place where you're looking for a breakthrough, you need a healing, you need, you know, you need something to manifest, man. The last thing I want you to do is to watch this and let the accuser of the brethren come in and twist this message and make you feel like, oh, no, it's, it's all on me. I'm so horrible. I'm so horrible. No, what I want you to do, you know, and you, and you could get into a place of feeling condemned or depressed because you haven't seen your breakthrough. And now you're like, oh, this is horrible. Oh, my, my faith is so bad. You know, what I want you to do rather than get into a place of or get into a place of guilt, condemnation, and shame, or, even, or go further down that path if you're already on it. What I want you to do is I want you to continue watching this, uh, this series and get your mind renewed so that your life can be transformed. Because wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, God's grace is for you. And when you, when you start to get and continue to get a transformational revelation of the, the love and the grace and the truth about God, Faith becomes, it, it's not something you have to work up. It's not something that you have to work up. It's something that's a natural, it's natural. Jesus never had to work up faith. He never had to get out the faith chainsaw and start pulling on that thing to try to get it to start. No, he just, faith was natural for him. It was his nature because he had a revelation of grace and truth. And, and the reality is you have been created in the image and likeness of God. Faith is your nature. It's your nature to be to, to walk in faith. And when you begin to realize my nature is faith, I've been created in the image and likeness of God. His nature is faith. By faith, he created the world. By faith, I create. I cre I, I, by faith, I pull into the manifestation, the grace that God has already set aside for me, and I can see the divine manifestation. I can see the miraculous. I can see the blessing flow. By faith, I, by faith, my words create, it's the creative force of God. When, 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 when we speak the word of God, we release the creative force of God into the situation. So I, there's no place for condemnation. There's no place for guilt. There's no place for shame. In fact, that brings you further outside of a place of faith because it, 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 it further denies the grace that's already there. So hey, keep watching. God has victory for you. He wants you to live strong. He wants you to live long. And he wants you to prosper and be in good health. So until next time, keep living in victory.